My boyfriend, Eric, has always vehemently hated my cards, Stella and Biscuit. I wish I could say that they've never given him a reason to, but honestly, I can't. They're perfect little angels around everyone, except for him. I should have taken that as a red flag. Eric and I started dating about three months ago. He seemed like a genuinely good person, but I've recently come to learn that he's anything but genuine. The issues didn't start until a month ago. We were at my house getting ready to leave for date night, and I heard it. Biscuit was emitting a low growl from the opposite room. I've had that cat for four years, and never once has he growled at anyone. I put down my curling iron and walked into the room just in time to see him swat my boyfriend's hand. Eric recoiled in pain, clutching his wounded appendage close to his chest. Ah, that really hurt you little bastard, he hissed, only provoking Biscuit further. Babe, are you okay? What happened? I just reached out to pet him, then Bitch Kit decided to play tetherball with my hand, Eric said through clenched teeth. I shot Biscuit a death glare. That got him to calm down. He glanced up at me with those heartbroken kitten eyes before darting behind the sofa. I hate it when he hits me with that look. I would appreciate it if he didn't call my cat names, but I let it slide because of this. Show me. I requested to my now teary-eyed boyfriend. He gazed up at me like a heart puppy. Was he playing it up? Oh, 100%. But I still couldn't help feeling a pang of pity stabbed through my chest like an ice pick. How's it look? He asked, wincing as I gently wiped away some of the blood. It's not bad at all. I'll get you a bond-aid. Then you should be right as rain. Kinda killed the vibe for date night though, didn't it? He sheepishly nodded. I thought so. We can get takeout instead. My treat. I said as I rummaged through my medicine cabinet. Eric smiled warmly at me as I found what I was looking for. Thanks, baby. You're the best. We spent the remainder of the evening cuddled up on the couch watching Netflix. All the while, Biscuit and Stella were nowhere to be found. That was odd. Usually, at least one of them would be curled up beside me. Other than that, nothing was out of the ordinary for the rest of the night. But I still couldn't help feeling uneasy. With how hectic my schedule had been, I didn't get a chance to spend time with Eric for another week afterwards. That Saturday, I found myself getting ready for my boyfriend to come over. Honestly, that was another blaring red flag that I decided to sweep under the rug. Eric had never invited me over to his place the entire time we'd been together. He'd get agitated whenever I brought it up, and it usually ended in a fight. I thought it was strange, but nothing that couldn't be explained away. Maybe his apartment was a mess. Maybe he was insecure about his choice of home decor. Or maybe he just wasn't ready yet. As I would come to find out, none of those were correct. That evening, Eric had offered to cook for me. I had no clue that he even knew how. So when I laid eyes on the four cheese lasagna he'd prepared, I was in awe. Babe, why didn't you tell me you were a five-star chef? I mean shit! Even Gordon Ramsay would want a piece of this. A smug grin crept across his face. He folded his arms across his chest and admired his handiwork. I am a man of many talents. Your boyfriend is a jack of all trades, he said, bowing dramatically. Hey, presentation isn't everything. The taste test will be the determining factor, I replied, shooting him a wink. Well, prepare to be amazed. Take a seat, milady. Dinner is served. You're a cornball, I giggled, as he pulled out a chair for me. Eric turned back to his masterpiece and began dishing out our servings. He grabbed the grated cheese and started pouring it on top. I couldn't see from my angle, but it seemed like he was taking a while with it. Maybe he was struggling to get the top off. Babe, do you need help? I asked, rising from my seat. I can... No. No. I've got it. Just sit back down. Something about the way he said that unnerved me. Eric had never snapped at me like that. Was my boyfriend hiding something from me? Here you are, my queen, Eric said, 
placing a plate before me. I glanced at his food. Mine had a lot more grated parmesan than his. Something didn't feel right, but I tried my best to brush it off as I raised a forkful of steaming lasagna to my mouth. Before I could eat it, however, a flash of black fur darted in front of me. It was Stella. She swatted the fork from my hand before it touched my lips, then swept her tail across the top of my food. The fuck? Did my cat just bitch slap the food out of my hand and then rub her hairy tail all over my plate? I was about to order Stella to get down from the table when I noticed that she had her huckles raised. She was hissing at my boyfriend and swatting the air. She was trying to protect me. But why? Shh, Stella. It's okay, girl, I whispered, lightly caressing her bark. I eventually calmed her down, but she didn't take her eyes off of Eric the entire time. The pair were trapped in a fierce staring march, and my cat was not going down without a fight. I cleaned Stella's tail, then rose to chop the ruined food and prepare myself a new plate. Eric had made more than enough, and he'd eaten some of his, so I was confident that it would be safe to consume. Oh, let me get that for you, Eric said, standing from his chair as I headed for the lasagna. No, I'll get it, I hissed, as he slumped back into his seat. Eric was pouty for the rest of the meal. He looked like a child who was told he was getting cold for Christmas. Something fishy was going on, and I was determined to get to the bottom of it. Things were fine between us for the next couple of weeks. Eric took me out on dates, bought me flowers, and did all the things that a sincere, loving boyfriend should do. I'd been suspicious of him, but I'd be lying if I said he wasn't breaking down my walls. If that was all an act, it was a damn good one. I let Eric spend the night for the first time a week ago. He was, understandably, ecstatic. I know most couples hit that milestone before they even start dating, but I like to be really comfortable with someone before I let them sleep in the same bed as me, you know? Thanks for letting me stay over, babe. It's nice to finally fall asleep with you in my arms. I'm not gonna lie, it does feel nice, I said, scooting closer. Eric's eyes were getting heavy. He yawned, then whispered in his sleepy voice that I had come to adore. I love you, Lindsay. My cheeks burned as red as a fire engine. He'd never said that to me before. As the shock wore off, I began to realise that I felt the same way. I love you too, Eric, I murmured, as we both shut our eyes and drifted off to sleep. I awoke to a shriek in the middle of the night. Eric was sitting upright, and I felt something heavy drop down onto the blanket over my abdomen. As my eyes adjusted to the darkness, I quickly realised what it was. A steak knife. Eric was wrestling with a beige ball of fur. I didn't waste any time. I snatched up the knife, threw off the covers, and leapt from the bed. With teary eyes, I pointed the weapon at Eric who was desperately trying to free his arm from Biscuit's death grip. Biscuit, come here, I muttered, my voice trembling. He instantly released Eric once he heard my voice. Biscuit scampered over to me, out of Eric's reach. Get out! Get the fuck out! I shouted, tears streaming down my cheeks. My now ex-boyfriend looked like he was about to cry. That infuriated me. He wasn't allowed to cry. Not after what he was going to do. Baby, please. I can explain. I... No. There's nothing to say. You were either going to stab me or my cats. So whatever it was, that was unacceptable. Get out of my house. Eric opened his mouth, trying to find the right words. But none came. His head hung low as he reluctantly gathered his things. It was taking all of my mental fortitude to hold it together. Once Eric was fully dressed... He shuffled away. He paused as he reached the front door and turned to face me. Are you sure that there's nothing I can say to change your mind? The knife shook in my grasp. You're sick. I don't ever want to see your face again. He didn't respond. He simply walked out into the night, leaving me a trembling mess in my living room. Something inside of me broke. 
I curled into a ball on my doormat as the shock hit me like a freight train. The man I loved had turned out to be a complete psychopath. How could I be so stupid? I sobbed for what felt like hours. Only when I had no tears left to cry did I realise what I needed to do. I called the police. The cops in my town are decent people. My cousin was on the force, so I knew they wouldn't blow me off. The police took my information and opened an investigation on Eric. But they never found him. Despite all the evidence I provided, there was no indication that Eric had ever existed. I got a sinking feeling in my gut when the realisation dawned on me. The shady antics, never inviting me over, the secretive behaviour throughout the entire relationship. He was like a ghost. And that's exactly what he wanted. Now, I'm terrified. I have gathered up the essentials, and the cats are in their carriers in the box seat. I'm making the four-hour drive to my parents' house. Because when I got home from work today, I found something that nearly caused me to pass out. When I walked into the living room, there was a note sitting on my coffee table. Along with it, a copy of my house key, and a bullet. My hands quivered as I picked up the letter. My heart plummeted to my toes when I read what was written on the crumpled paper. Hey baby, I can't wait to see you for date night. I have a killer outing planned. Your loving boyfriend, Eric. I'm still shaking. I don't know how long he's had that key. The thing is, I live alone and I've never given him a spare. I shouldn't have trusted him, but hindsight is twenty twenty. Please, I'm begging you, listen to your pets. They might just save your life.